Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 62, Q&A series, Personality and Future Goals. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my insightful and intelligent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi. Hi. That's yes. sudden. Uh, so this week, uh, this podcast is actually going to kick off uh, kind of a one in a series of question and answer podcasts that we're going to be doing. Um, one of the original concepts of this podcast when we started over a year ago was to sort of get the perspective of, of a teenager, you know, hence the title of the podcast insights in the teens. Uh, we've done a couple of different type of formats in that time. We've done some instructional ones. We've done some interview ones. Uh, but the Q&A series here is kind of that attempt to bring it back down to, you know, let's, let's look inside the mind of a teenager. Okay. So um, we have uh, two sets of questions here. The first set is... Personality questions, and, and we may have asked some of these in the past already, but I think they're certainly worthwhile to revisit some of these. Yep. And the other set is about future goals, which we've not actually talked about uh, all that much. Great. And that set of questions is actually going to lead into the topic um, we'll be talking about next week. Hey, so, spoiler alert. <laughs> just sort of a little teaser there for folks. One teaser. Um, are you ready to get into it? Sure, why not? All right. So I'm just going to start off uh, asking the questions and go down the list, and uh, where necessary, we'll expound on some of the questions. Uh, the first one that we have on the list here is, what would you say is one of your weaknesses? Um... I'm pretty sure we've talked about this many times before. I'd probably say my physical activity. Um, we've discussed many times in the past before. I am not an athlete. I probably never will be. I don't really like playing sports. I am not very active. And um, that's probably one of my weaknesses. Okay. So we're just talking uh physical athletic talent we're talking here um well not just that it's not just the talent part i also have trouble actually doing the physical activity like having shortness of breath and that causes a well and i think yeah. some of that comes with the fact that you don't do it often enough like you don't have any physical inabilities you don't have any any physical disabilities or anything like that that would prevent you from, from doing these things. Um, your lack of desire to do these things, I think, results in you not doing them. And then when you have to do them, say in gym class, for instance, you find that you have the shortness of breath just from the lack of doing them, right? I guess, yeah. Okay. So you don't, you're not physically incapable of doing these things. Not really. Okay. I mean, there are kids out there who are, you know, physically handicapped and and fit and challenged and are unable to walk or run or or whatever. That's not something that afflicts you, though. Yeah, it's just my de desire for it. Right. Okay. So the next question that we had was, are you more of an the original the first question kind of alludes to this, but are you more of an indoor person or an outdoor person? 
I'm much more of an indoor person, especially when it comes to spring and summer. I don't like heat and I don't like bugs. I honestly, whenever I'm supposed to be out in summer or uh, spring, I just have this overall fear because I don't like things flying around me, especially bees, which is, I think, the main cause for my um, reflexes towards anything flying towards me or anything that I see. So I'm much more of an indoor person. Okay, and I think I, uh, I would second that. I'm not much of an outdoor person myself. Um, I already know the answer to this one, and I think most of the audience does as well, but are you a cat person or a dog person? I am a cat person. I've always been a cat person. I've never been a dog person. Okay. Not that I know, at least. Any particular reason for that? Um... I mean, I have nothing against dogs, but I think when I was younger, I actually sort of had a fear of them because I didn't like the big dogs. And whenever we would visit, like, my um, my mom's friends, like, when they had big dogs, like, when they would just tackle me, I never liked it. And I think that sort of developed. Plus, I also grew up in a household of cats, and I just had a liking to them, so. Okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, what joke never fails to make you laugh? And I know it has to be one of mine, right? Um, in a way, yes. <laughs> I remember, okay, so there's one joke that will never get old for me, and it never has. So, um, we had actually looked on a story of a, um, this is where your joke came from. We had looked on a story from Alexa with a, uh, very with like a Russian man taking his fat cat on a plane and his name was Victor. And you always just made these jokes saying, I'm sorry, Victor, you're too fat. I'm sorry, Victor, you're too fat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that one never um, fails to make me laugh. You always have it in different forms as well. With different. It's just hilarious to me. I don't know why. I just love it. Okay. All right. Well, that that is a good one. I like that one too. Uh, let's see. Who are your heroes and what qualities do you admire about them? Okay. Um, well, of course, I'm first going to go on to you and mommy. You two have taken very good care of me. You've, um, shown me that it's better to be respectful and kind to others rather than to, um, try and upset them and stuff like that. Um, and, of course, you guys are the biggest role models in my life. Um, no surprise there because you're my parents and you've definitely shown to be very um, good heroes. And I love the... And although you do have some um, not so good qualities, mainly due to screaming at technology from you, um, I definitely think I... Um, I'm so glad you called me on the carpet for that. <laughs> not... <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, you guys have definitely sh helped shape me into the person I am now. Um, I choose I choose to be respectful because of you and mommy. I um, choose to be helpful to others. I choose not to try and snap at people. Um, okay. Not by choice, at least. That's good. All good qualities, and I'm I'm pleased to hear that that I'm one of your heroes there, even though I am flawed and yell at technology. Hey, I'm flawed too. I did the same thing. Uh, so the next question is a multi-part question. Oh, this will be fun. Is there someone who you think looks up to you? If so, who is it? But don't name names, like I you won't. know, a friend from school or something like that. And what do you think they look up to you about? Like, why do you think they would look up to you? Well, um. This is a little bit of a toughie. I guess I'm just going to say it might be some of my younger friends. I'm not trying to say that all my younger friends look up to me. I just kind of think some of them do. And that's natural. Yeah, I really I really don't know if anyone looks up to me. No one's actually ever told me up front, and no one's really ever shown it, but I think some of my younger friends might actually look up to me. And do you think that's just because of the age difference, or is it because you 
set a good example? Like, what do you think the, the motivation is? I mean, I try to set a good example. I don't want to seem like a horrible person in front of people. I try my best to act respectful and kind. And I think sometimes people, um, my younger friends might notice that and they might want to um, look up to me for that and use me as one of their role models. But then again, I'm still not sure. I don't want to speak for them, but you know. Okay. Fair enough. Um, what is something that you really like about yourself? Hmm. Um, well, I do appreciate my artistic ability. Um, I've probably said that multiple times before. Um, I like how I'm able to express my creativity in many different ways. You can, um, go to the back to the art podcast to um learn more about that but i've expressed my creativity in many different ways um and i really like that i'm um that i not only have my creativity just to um satisfy myself but i also do it for others as well okay good answer uh so the next question is another multi-part question wonderful uh, this one I think might be a little easier to answer. Okay. So who is the most important person in your life and how can you enhance your relationship with that person? Uh, can I say more than one? Yeah, I suppose you can. There aren't any rules here. I'm probably going to say you and mommy. I mean, I don't really know. I mean... I, That's fine. The whole quarantine time, we've definitely got to spend a lot more time together, even though you still have to go to work. But right. me and mommy have definitely spent some time. Like I, um, I think I've said this before in the podcast. We actually do movie nights, um, where we just watch a movie for an hour together. And you and I, and like we all do, like rock band together, and we just um have a fun time playing songs that we know and playing songs that we don't know and figuring out if we can do it or not. And the podcast is also a good example of it because um, this would just be a normal talk that we could have had, but it's just more public. Right. Um, and A little more structured, not just that it's public. Yeah, a little more structured and stuff like that. And you might be helping other people with this too. Yeah. Okay, good answer. Uh, the next question is, who has had a profound influence on you as a child? And it doesn't have to be mommy and I, uh, but are there any teachers that's, that come to mind or any other adults or family members or, you know, even, you know, famous role models that you, you model yourself after? Um, um, there is my one fifth grade teacher, um. I think I've talked about him before on the podcast in earlier ones. Um, he um, was able to um, have a very humorous teaching, but also have it structured and um, have us able to learn. And I definitely like that um, factor in him because he was not only able to make learning fun, but he was also able to... Um, make sure we understood the material. Um, so um, I definitely think by when I was um, in fifth grade, he was a pretty big inspiration on me. And um, Now, who was this? Um, this was my teacher, Mr. Trimbetta. Mr. Um, T. Or Mr. T. <laughs> yeah, you always, the fool. you always meme on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and that's cool, and I think that's important. I had a teacher, uh, I think he was my ninth grade the tenth grade, my tenth grade history teacher, uh, Mr. Francis, uh, was the same type of person. He wasn't humorous like Mr. Trimbetta was, but he was someone who had that special gift for capturing the imagination of his students, and not just m like helping you learn, but making you want to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's that's really what makes a an exceptional teacher. You know, the teachers aren't just there to to spout from a a textbook and, and pour knowledge into you. They're there to, to make you any teacher that can give you that desire and that that love of learning, I think, is is very special. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what do you find is the hardest thing for you to do? Um... Is there a subject you have a problem with? Is there uh, going out in public? Is it public speaking? Is it socializing? Okay, I'm pretty sure the last three, you probably got it. <laughs> you probably got it right. Um, as much as I'm able to uh, talk a lot, um, I'm very bad at trying to start conversations. It's a little harder for me to make friends since I don't, really like to start conversations. I mean, I could totally start a conversation, but I choose not to because, I don't know, I've just had the feeling that I really don't want to talk to people if I don't have to, unless they're like my friends or family. Um, but, um, yeah, I also am pretty bad with um, presentations and public speaking. Um, I've gotten better, but I still don't like it when people stare at me, um, which is why I'm terrible with eye contact with any people I really don't know. Um, so. It's because the eyes are the windows to the soul. Look, I really don't know. I just don't <laughs> like st people staring me in the eyes. I don't okay. like it. That's, we all have our, our little things, so nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, in what situations do you become discouraged? Um... Hmm. You mean like distraught or sad? No, like, 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 for instance, if you, like, you were very discouraged when uh, you didn't get an A in one of your classes. Oh, great. Like that type of thing. The, the kind of thing where you, you, you tend to lose your drive or the situations that you get down on yourself. Um... Okay, so that's probably a pretty good example. Sometimes when I realize that I um, failed to do something that I wanted to complete, I kind of lose myself and think that I could have done better than I could have, but I kind of take it a little too far. Okay. I still need to work on that. Um, and when you say take it too far, you you just tend to be very hard on yourself in those situations. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's... that's I kind of expected that. Uh, you're a little young for this one here, but it's worthwhile throwing it out because uh, it's just a hypothetical question. If you got a tattoo, what would it be? Uh, oh. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm, that's a tough one. You don't think about these. Yeah, because like, it's basically a memoir that'll just be on your body for pretty much the rest of your life. Right. Oh, 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 God. Mm. I would get a Darth Vader or something like that, of obviously. Of course you would. Um, I really don't know. I mean, I How about, like, a uh, tattoo of the cat? Oh, yeah, that would work, like, of all my cats. Like, all the cats you've ever had, you get a tattoo of each of them, you know? That yeah. way you always have them with you. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, what do you think are the five most important traits uh, for a person to have? All right. I think we've done something similar to this before, but we can just go over it. So... Well, we talked about it as far as friends, but we're just saying people in general. Yeah. So... What I makes a good person, I guess I could say. So, I definitely think one of the most important qualities is respect of others because, well, um, without... If you don't respect others and yourself, you're going to kind of end up a pretty much sort of a crabby person um i would <laughs> well, okay that's one way to put it um but um um i definitely think respect would be a very important quality for anyone to have um because not only do you have to respect others and your peers but you have to also have to respect yourself and your own decisions i also think that um generosity is a good quality um being able to give someone else something and not expect a reward is definitely um, a good quality for um, a good person because they don't expect anything in return and they don't get greedy. Um, another quality would be kindness. Um, um, overall, 
um, overall happiness toward the world, um, positive outcomes, stuff like that. Okay. Another one would be... Um, Um, another one would probably be positive hobbies, um, like hobbies that are, or positive interests, stuff like that, like. Being a constructive, productive person. Yeah. Um, um, you have the ability to have, um, different interests that you can possibly relate with others. And on the topic, you also should, um. I think the fifth quality should be um, probably a hard worker because working okay. hard. Good work ethic, yeah. Yeah, good work ethic could get you um, through school, get a good job, a good paying job, a job that you love, stuff like that. Okay, I think they are all good qualities, and I think many of those would be on my short list as well. So the next question we have is another multi part. What is the furthest you have ever traveled from your home? Um, I'm assuming it's Florida. Probably not. Okay. Um, because the other side of the country is about oh twice yeah, as far. California. <laughs> I've been to California. Yeah. So, and what what did you do? Where did you go? And how long did you stay there? I. No, I'm not exactly sure about how long. Maybe a week. About or a so. week, yeah. Um, we had went to Disneyland. Um, it was actually during. Was it during August? I know it was like a Halloween themed um one, but was it like no? We went. I think it was in September that we went because I had gone out for work, and you guys, you know, since I was going kind of tagged along yeah <laughs> and you know went along for the ride yeah and i went out there and i worked for three days and uh, you guys went to the parks yep so okay good so this is an interesting question under under these times oh mommy just confirmed it was october oh. okay thank <laughs> okay. you okay thanks mommy thank you mommy um do you like school uh, oh, and, and mommy says we were there for your birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so do you like school and why or why not? Um, okay, so I guess this is going to have to be in uh, two parts. Like, do I like actually going to, physically going to school? Do, or do, do I you like, like the concept? Let's talk philosophically. Do you like the concept of school? Um... In a way, yes. It's a structured way on how to teach um, kids and teenagers, preteens. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead and clear your throat there. Yeah. Um, it's a way to teach um, adolescents, um, kids, and other people of younger ages. I don't know all the, um, I don't know, age groups. Let's just call them students. Students. <laughs> it's um, a structured way in to teach students um, important skills that they will probably learn for um, they will probably use for the rest of their lives, depending on their career um, or how they choose to live their lives. Um, okay. And well. I definitely think that although some people do get annoyed with certain aspects of school i think overall it's important for everyone to have because it gives you intelligence and it can make a quality person okay i would uh, largely agree with everything you said uh if you could change one thing about yourself what would it be and why um hmm let's see I guess one of the main things I try and change is my um, is my fear of well, I guess my fear. Um, Go down the list and pick one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, I guess my fear of failing. Fear of failing. Okay. I. As much as I will fully admit to any failures or mistakes I made, um, I don't exactly treat myself very 
well from it. I'm hard on myself with any mistakes I made, um, saying I could have done better, stuff like that. Um, if I could change that factor, saying that um, I'm not as hard on myself, but still enough to where I don't make that same mistake again, um, I would definitely change it. So you want to, you don't want to lose that drive that you get from that, but you don't want to punish yourself as much. Yeah. So I kind of want to weaken it a bit. Okay. I, I can certainly see that. Uh, the last one that we have in this category is what awards or prizes have you won? Um, well, I'll probably just talk about my sixth grade ceremony for the stuff I've got there. Um, because um, since I was at my old elementary school for five years, I was given an award for all A's during the whole five years I was there, including an award for all A's in sixth grade. Um, I was also given, um, I, was actu I actually had the, science, the highest science average, which was actually kind of surprising. Um, I didn't know I'd actually win that award from, for my class, so... Hooray. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I had, I think I got a couple more awards from that, um, but those three were the main ones. Yeah, I think you, you pretty much walked home with an arm full of awards from that ceremony. Yeah, I also had won something for fifth grade, which was art-related. It was our D.A.R.E. posters, and I had, and I was um, the winner of my class. There were, um, I think... Four or three um, other fifth grade, there were like four or three fifth grade classes, and mine was one, and they chose which one would win, and I was lucky enough to win. Um, so at our um, uh, dare ceremony, um, it was shown off, and we, and yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So you're, you're fairly well accomplished academically then. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that was all we had for questions in the about personality category. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about questions regarding your future goals. We. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So the next set of questions we have are about your future goals. All right. So if you ever have the opportunity to meet anyone famous, who would it be? Mm. Are there any actors or athletes or musicians you like to meet? Um... I guess I might want to meet like a famous artist or mus musician since um, I am kind of talented in the art form and music form. Um, okay. Don't know who because I don't really have any celebrity idols right now. Okay, and there's an absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay. So this next question is a big question. Oh, great. Um, what is your ultimate goal in life? Uh, and it's big because I don't know what my answer would be. Oh, great. Um, uh, 
You know, is it, do you want to graduate college? Do you want to get a career in a certain field? Do you want to get married and have kids? Is that your ultimate goal? Okay, so I kind of have multiple answers in a way. Oh, okay, great. So, I do eventually want to graduate from college and get a good degree, and um, I am looking into a career field that um, mainly suits my artistic ability and creative ability, um, because those are the main, because that's basically what's been shining in my brain for a while now. Um, As for a family and such, I'm not really sure I want to get married at this point, but well, at this um, point, probably would be bad. Yeah. I mean, not now. Oh. Not like, not now, but not, I don't want to re, I haven't really thought about getting married later in the future. That's good. But, um, I may want to adopt a child. I was actually thinking about it, like, um, I know that, um, kids in foster homes and pe- and kids who don't have parents don't exactly have the best lives and I just basically want to help one of those kids and give them a good life um, once they get um, a stable income, a stable job, and a stable um, household for them. Okay, I think that's very admirable. Um, the next question we have is kind of a difficult one under today's circumstances. Ah. And that is, what scares you the most about the future? Ah, um, hmm. I guess, um, actually, there's a couple things that scare me about the future. Okay. So, I think one of the main ones is losing everyone that I love. Um, like, I'm afraid of losing you and mommy, and I'm afraid that about losing my friends and I'm afraid that in the future I'll end up just being lonely after like um you and mommy pass away and if I don't have any like good friend groups or anything I just I've always had this fear of being lonely in the future I've had it for a little while now um and it's definitely shown through in today's standards at least um okay I'm also afraid of basically um the world ending, basically. Like, I'm pretty sure some other people can relate to me, um, especially after what's been happening given, now. Yeah, given the today's current events, I can see that. Yeah, I've been afraid of the world ending for a while now, and I'm also afraid of when my time comes because I don't want to leave the world. Okay. Well, I think these are all fairly normal human fears. Yeah. Uh, I could certainly understand where they're coming from. Uh, On a more upbeat note, after those two heavy questions, uh, what would you consider to be your dream job? Oh, (laughs) well, we've been talking about this for a while now. So I have honestly a lot of plans for a job. I really don't know which one to pick. Um, I am. I do like um, writing and making fictional stories, so I might become an author. I could become an author, or that can just be like one of my hobbies on side of a job. Um, we've also um, talked about becoming. Um, you've also talked to me about becoming um, an architecture, right? Yep, an architect, called. right? Um, Where you take your your artistic side and you combine it with your engineering and building side yeah and recently you've actually talked about becoming a fashion designer as well since i design so many different outfits when i draw yeah uh so and that's only a small handful of the many possible careers for me at this point um i could i could become an artist um i honestly really don't know there's honestly a lot of fields in art that i could take to on a career path and uh, I don't know. None, none really seems so clear. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a ton of possibilities out for you, out there for you, giving your creativity and your talent. Yeah. That much I can tell you. Um, so to expound on that, what are your future plans? What are your plans for the future? Is it you want to go to college? You want to go to trade school? You want to go off and live in the woods you know what is it that that drives you in the future what do you want to do all righty so i've actually had this 
mindset for a little while now. Um, so what I think I want to do is I want to finish up school, I want to graduate from high school, and I do eventually want to go to college to um, master some sort of degree. I'm still not quite sure what I want it to be right now. Um, but I do want to eventually graduate from college with a good degree. I want to get a successful job that can earn me a stable income. Um, um, I probably, I don't know if I want to buy, like, a huge house. I probably won't. Um, I'll either buy a small house or just a, in a, um, maybe a spacey apartment. Um, and as I said before, I might want to adopt a child, um, when the time comes that I have a good house, a good and steady household, and a stable income from my job. Um, and, um, I still want to try and keep in contact with you and Mommy and the rest of my friends that I have, um, then, and, um, I still want to have, like, I also want to spend some good time with um, my possible um, child at that point. Um, and that's pretty much how far I've planned it. I don't know what I'll do once I get um, slightly older. I don't know what I'll do um, once. Um, well, you know what? For a 13-year-old, you got a pretty solid plan there. <laughs> I don't think most 13-year-olds have thought that far ahead. Uh, so... For this next question, I have to ask a qualifying question. Do you know what a bucket list is? Um, isn't a bucket list like something of like, like places you want to travel, things you want to do before you die? Well, it doesn't have to be before you die. Like you could have a bucket list of things you want to do before you graduate college okay. or before you get married or settle down or whatever it is or before you die. So it's a list of things you want to do places you want to go, that type of thing. So do you have a bucket list is the first question. It's a multi-part question. Um, okay, so in a way, yes, I might have multiple. Okay. In a way. So what are the top two or three things on that bucket list? Okay, so probably the top thing is to finish school and go to college. A noble Noble uh, goal there. Um, the next one would to be would be to get a job that fits my creative aspect and end up in a um and end up in a pretty good living um and have pretty good living conditions. Okay. Um, and then the next one would definitely to be would definitely be to make sure I keep in contact with. Um, you, mommy, um, and anyone else who I'm close to, um, because, um, I know not a lot of people, um, have that because they're too busy with their jobs, but I want to try and make sure I still have, like, um, I still see you guys often, I don't want to, um, f like, I don't want to end up not visiting you or not talking with you, um, after I move out, I just want to... Okay. I I would certainly concur with all of those. Um, so we've kind of talked a little bit about the answer to this question, but I want to take a, a different spin on it. What do you plan to do after you graduate from school, from, from college, say? Do you plan on going off? In, like, like some people finish school... And depending on where they go to school, right? Because you may go to school in California. Um, some people continue to live where they go to school, and that's where they stay, and they take up residence there. Some people come home. Some people go somewhere else. Some people join the military. Some people join the Peace Corps. What do you want to do after you graduate college? Well, I definitely think wherever I go to college, I'll always come back home and I'll stay there for a few months until I figure out exactly where I want to live and um, um, what house or um, where and where I want to live uh, and what building I want to live in. Right. Like, do you want a house? Do you want an apartment? That type of thing. Yeah. Um, 
And that's mainly so I can still spend time with you guys. Also, I probably won't have a lot of plans like then, um, but I'll take the few months afterwards to plan with, um, to plan at home with you and mommy. Okay. Good answer. And again, following up on that, and not that I'm trying to push you out the door, but at <laughs> what age would you like to live on your own? Mm. Figure you get out of college, you're going to be 22, 23, depending on, you know, what you're going to college for. You could be older, obviously, but is that when you, you think you're going to be ready? Do you want to stick around till you're in your mid, late 20s? You know, what do you think would be good for you? Okay, so I definitely think um, if we're going for like 20 um, two, we'll just say maybe 23, stuff like that. I will s definitely probably still come home. I might spend like another year, um, maybe, um, like not just a few months, but maybe like, um, another year. But, um, I definitely pro I will probably still move out after college, but I probably won't move out immediately. Um, I'll still want to stay with you and mommy for a little bit while I figure out where I want to um, live. So I might be a little older than some um, than um, some people who are moving out. I might be a bit younger, but I definitely think around uh, 23, 24 um, would be um, a pretty good time to um, maybe finally leave the nest. Okay. So for this question, I kind of have to change it a little bit because the the time period it refers to is probably a little short. So I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna lengthen it. So what do you think your life will look like twenty years from now? Okay, so twenty years from now would be thirty three. Right. Well, hopefully then I'll have a job once again that suits my creative ability. Don't know which, but um. I do want to have it like that. And depending on if I live in a small house or um, a spacey apartment room, um, I still want to have, um, I don't know if then or later I'll have, I will have adopted a child, but I do want to at some point. And I probably will um, um, possibly get a cat or two, maybe even three. I don't know. I just want like, I just know I want pets. I've just, I didn't mention that before, but I know I want um, to have a cat or two or three. <laughs> or four or five. <laughs> so by 33, you'll be a crazy cat lady. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I won't be completely crazy. I'll just have <laughs> one or two. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And the last question that we have here is kind of a far reaching one here. Oh, God. Um, and nothing, nothing big, but. Where do you think, or what do you think, the world will be like 25 years from now? Okay, so 25 years. I'll Not specifically dead. you, but the world in general. Where do you, what do you, are we going to have flying cars? You know, are we still going to be wearing face masks from the, you know, outbreak? Where well, do you think we'll be in 25 years? Well, let's hope that we're not going to be wearing face masks around. Um, but there is, um... I am hoping that the world will um, will be more accepting um, for like gender, sexualities, stu um, races, religion, stuff like that. Um, I hope that some. I hope that some um, um, relations with world continents and um, big world. Um, I don't know. Politics. And Politics will be <laughs> at ease. I don't want the world to be at complete war. I don't want many diseases, hopefully. And I also hope that at some point in those 25 years, we might have a cure c to cancer. Um, and there will be less cases. Um, and... I just really hope that the world would be a better place. But then again, you don't know. The world could be an even worse place than it is now. But True. I really just hope that the main thing, we're more accepting, no more, dis no more real diseases, um, powerful nations actually get along for once. But, you know. Okay. 
I think you paint a uh, very uh, positive outlook on the future for us. Mm. Uh, that was all the questions that I have. We're going to take a quick break, come back. We'll get your closing remarks and your shout outs. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to answer the questions. Um, I'm hoping that your answers to these questions will help drive some future episodes for us. Yeah, let's hope. Um, next week, we're going to be talking more about your future goals. Awesome. Um, going to give you some statistics and some other options and stuff like that. Hey, statistics. How long has it been since we've had those? Yeah, I know. You do love a good statistic, don't you? Yep. Um, so that was all I had question wise this week. Uh, I will turn it over to you for your closing remarks and shout outs. Okay. Um, I really don't know what to say except the fact, um, try to plan out your future, make some goals. Um, they don't have to. They don't have to be long-term. They could be short-term, like, what do you want to do today? Or how do you want, um, how can you improve being a good student? Stuff like that. Um, um, and if you want to, try and plan out your future if you want. I really am not trying to pressure you to um, go into anything too soon, but um, it's just important to send, set goals and have ideas of what you want to do in the future. Any shout-outs? I guess I've already shouted out you guys multiple times. Well, mind, shout out so. to Mr. T. Okay, shout out to my teacher, Mr. Trombetta, once again. It's been a while since I've mentioned him. Um, so, once again, he's a great teacher. If he's watching this, um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not very good at this. That's fine. I think you did fine. Okay, thanks. Uh, so that was all we had this week. Uh, next week, we'll be back with a regular topical uh, discussion. Uh, in the meantime, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple uh, Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all your major podcast uh, providers we are available on. If you have questions, comments, suggestions, snide remarks, bad jokes, you can send them to comments at insightsintothings.com. Please talk to us, we're lonely. Um, you can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. On Facebook, you can get us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can get our audio podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We stream live six days a week uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. And you can get links to all those wonderful things on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. <laughs> and don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and mommy and also insights into tomorrow um our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother sam which we s will resume recording shortly we've been on hiatus with the 
coronavirus issues. Yep. So that's it. Uh, we're done for this week. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching and take care.